Hello! Let's talk about Ernest Hemingway today. Um, he is a great American author, born in 1899 to 1961. We see him there with a pretty um, cool, casual type persona. Um, the nice thing about more recent authors is we get to see many more images of them and it, it kind of opens up who they are to us a lot more. So we will see some images in this PowerPoint. So his childhood, he was born in July of 1899 in Illinois. He was the second of six kids. His parents were Dr. Clarence Edmonds Hemingway and Grace Hall Hemingway. In his early adulthood, he started to write for the Kansas City Star, and the newspaper advocated short sentences, short paragraphs, active verbs, authenticity, compression, clarity, and immediacy. And that type of writing is what he excelled at. We'll see that we can analyze his writing and we can talk about it and discuss it. However, it's an easy read. It's very elementary in, in grammar and in context, like the sentences are easy to get through. That does not mean that there's not a deeper, stronger meaning behind it. Um, as an early adult, he also joined a volunteer ambulance unit in the Italian army during World War I. And he was wounded by fragments from an Australian mortar shell. So because of these things, he was awarded the Italian Silver Medal for Valor. And we will see um, a lots of connections to war in his writings. Here are some images of him. I always find it interesting to look at pictures and, and to try to think what they were thinking, what was going on around them, what was the world was like for them, and how at that moment they probably never thought that we would still be looking back at them many years later discussing who they were. So he moves to Paris in his 20s as a foreign correspondent for the Toronto Star. He became a member of a group of um, Americans that lived there called the Lost Generation by Gertrude Stein, Ezra Pound, F. Scott Fitzgerald. And Stein hosted uh, many like get-togethers and things to discuss literature and the arts, and he enjoyed being part of that. Mm. Four marriages, a couple kids. We can see that it's interesting that when one ended, another one was started fairly quickly. Tells you a little bit about um, his personality, I suppose. These are pictures of him and his different wives and his children. He ended up settling in Idaho. Um, he was uh, drank a lot. He was an alcoholic, and his health began to deteriorate partially because of that. So he was admitted to the Mayo Clinic for his mental health, and he was given shock treatments. However, he stopped being able to write the way he used to write, and because of that, he ultimately shot himself in the head. These are some of his famous novels. Um, most likely have heard of most to all of them. Some of his famous short stories. Uh, he won a Pulitzer Prize, a Nobel Prize, the American Academy of Arts and Letters Award of Merit. He was an excellent writer. Um, his viewpoints. For Hemingway, God did not exist and the universe is indifferent. The resulting world is hostile and muddled, and without God and faith, moral values are also meaningless. War is an example. So his writing style, very minimalist, uh, grade school-like grammar, which we talked about, unvarnished descriptions, short declarative sentences, and definitely accessible to anyone, to any common reader, which actually is one of the things that made him so popular it is based on the reading level. One of the things that makes him so interesting is the iceberg principle. So Hemingway's theory of emission is widely referred to as the iceberg principle. 
By embedding certain parts of a story, he actually strengthens the story. The writer must be conscious of these omissions and be writing true enough in order for the reader to sense the omitted parts. When the reader senses the omitted parts, a greater perception and understanding of the story can be achieved. So he leaves parts out to make the, the rest of it um, that much stronger. It's kind of like when you're losing one sense of the story, all the rest get stronger. We could talk about that a little bit in um, one of his stories in a minute. Symbolism. So Hemingway disliked discussions regarding symbolism as well. The iceberg principle, however, by its very nature, invites symbolic interpretations, and Hemingway did acknowledge them in his own subtle way. No good writer ever prepared his symbols ahead of time and wrote his book about them, but out of a good book, which is true to life, symbols may arise and be profitably explored if not overemphasized. So when we look at hills of white elephants, well, we think to ourselves, what is a white elephant? What did it originate from? Um, some of us might think more recently, oh, a well, white elephant sale, and you don't want something, you give it away. Or you might relate it back to a king giving a white elephant and the connection that it was too difficult to take care of. When you read the story, you are going to read about someone called the American man and the girl. Not necessarily a younger girl, but why does he refer to her as a girl? They have had um, a relationship. They're old enough to drink, although we don't know their exact ages, so they're at a bar. Having drinks, discussing an operation that he's encouraging her to get, and she's not so sure about. Yet he also says, oh, well, if you don't want it, I don't want to force you to. But then he keeps saying things, but we'll be happy if you do. Things will go back just the way they were. It's a simple operation. You'll be fine. I know tons of people have had it. So we definitely see the pressure of him trying to force her into doing um, this operation. Um, and if, if you analyze it and read it and you look at everything it's saying, you can make a connection to assume that it's probably um, an abortion taking place in the late 1920s which was probably not the easiest, simplest operation. Um, it's actually quite dangerous during that time frame. Um, but a white elephant, a hill is like a pregnancy hill, and a white foot hill is something that you don't want. So they keep reflect. she keeps reflecting on um, the, the hills and how they look like white elephants. So there, there's a connection there. But he doesn't tell us exactly what it is. And because he admits, omits it from the story, we have to use the other kind of clues and the other things going on and make them that much stronger to have that true, deeper understanding. So kind of like I said, the writing's simple and basic, but you're really having this deep analysis for an understanding. All right, good luck with the reading.